Hey everybody, welcome back to the Daily Burn. This is the war room of the political revolution. Come on in, we'll start in just a second. What this is, is a daily motivational, inspirational show for all of us that are out there every day fighting in this political revolution in order to change our government into one that works for the people. So please like and share. Do all you can to get this show and this message out there. We need to be the media. So like, share, and comment. Any interaction in the show helps us do better in the algorithm and get out to more viewers. And I would greatly appreciate that. So thanks for coming to The Daily Burn. I'm your host, Sean Yankee. I'm a little under the weather, but we're gonna plug through it. I got a bad cough, and as you can tell, I'm all sinusy. But hey, you gotta do what you gotta do, right? We got to do this every day. We got to keep working no matter what. Even when you don't feel like it, you keep pushing, even when it's hard. Um, I'm going to start with a quote again. And this one's by Robert Kennedy. And it goes, Only those that dare to fail greatly can ever achieve greatly. It's a really good quote. Um, you know, if you don't try, you, you won't fail. You know, you're in no danger of failing, but you'll never accomplish anything either. And, you know, failure is just something that happens on the road to success. Success is just getting back up when you fail. When you get knocked down, getting back up and keep going. That's, that's how you succeed. That's how winning is done. Life will kick your ass on a regular basis. It is very good at it. Um, it's what it does. So especially when you're trying to accomplish something or you want to do something life is going to throw challenges at you and it's what you do in the face of those challenges and those obstacles that determines whether or not you succeed if you roll up in a ball quit and give up listen to the weak voice in your head and you know take the easy way out nothing's going to happen for you but if instead of that you ignore the weak voice in your mind and and tell it no i am going to do this i have set my mind to something i have decided i'm going to do it and then keep pushing forward and when you fail and when you get knocked down get back up keep going that is how you win that is how progress takes place you know you can do whatever you set your mind to that is something that people say and a lot of times people think it's cheesy and they don't you know, really take it in. It's true. It's true. Your mind is very powerful. And if you can train your mind to be strong, which you can, you know, you can exercise your mind like, like any other muscle in your body. And, you know, most of us don't ever realize, but what, what does science say? 10% of our mind's potential. There's all kinds of unlocked potential inside of each one of us and in your mind you can you can decide to stop accepting something and and to change your reality and if you believe in it and do the work you can get it done right but I'm getting a little sidetracked here I I was writing these out the monologue I was writing them out and you know, I, I've just been struggling with writer's block lately. And also, it's kind of nice to just do it. And sometimes that's what you got to do, right? You know, I do this show every day, uh, six days a week. And it's hard sometimes because, one, I'm an amateur. I am winging this. I don't fully know what I'm doing, but I'm doing the best I can. And two, it's... You know, you don't want to be repetitive. I don't want to say the same thing every day. And that was one of the reasons why I was writing them out. Because that way I could be careful. And make sure that I wasn't repeating myself over and over again. But it's kind of like Bernie was saying. He was, he was told in an interview that he talks about the same things all the time, right? And his response was, well, when we accomplish some of these things, when we get health care, for all our citizens, when we get a living wage, when we, when we start doing some of these things, I'll talk about something else, you know? And I started this show to speak to 
those of us that are fighting every day in this revolution and to be a positive voice for us because there's so much negativity out there you know there's so many people wanting to tell you that it can't be done that there's nothing you can do that that we're naive even for fighting but i wanted there to be a show out there that told people that not only are you on the right path but this this can work it really can you know I am not an optimistic person. I'm a realist. But I, I believe in this fight 100%. You know, and this is the way change takes place. You know, what's happening right now, I never thought I would see it. And now that it is happening, I have to do all I can in this fight. You know, because this is our fight. That's the most important thing that I think Bernie says in his message and he probably says it five six times per stump speech and then reinstates it anytime the crowd chants bernie bernie he always says it's not me it's us right he can't do any of this on his own no one can bernie's great politician has a great career great history a great background has been fighting for these things his whole life very consistent um but he's just one man you know, no matter how good of a politician he is, no matter how popular he is, no matter how good his vision is and how good his ideas are, he can't accomplish any of them without us. You know, we have to realize that that what's what's being shown to us is is how to take back our government, how to take back our futures, how to improve our situation and the way to do that is for millions of us to stand united and demand it and then to do the work and make sure that it happens and then to stay vigilant the fight doesn't end when we elect Bernie Sanders that is just the beginning you know that is going to be a nuclear strike electing Bernie Sanders president will be something that inspires millions of people to get involved in politics in this country and will be the thing that helps us get the ball rolling to make this change happen. You know, it it's going to be a massive strike to the powers that be in the establishment, but it's not the end of the fight, it's just the beginning. You know, um, but if we understand that this is up to us and we do all we can, we can win this, you know, that's a fact. It's not me being a dreamer. Although, you know, I am a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm a realist. And I just know that this is, this is the way change takes place. And we have the momentum to win. We can do this. Now, I include a link in the description of every daily burn to BernieSanders.com. Please go there and see if there's any way that you can help out the campaign by maybe becoming one of the more than 2 million of us that are volunteering to help get Bernie elected which is crazy. Have you ever heard of anything like that? It's almost 3 million now. 3 million volunteers, um, over 2.5 million individual contributions to a politician. You know, we bought our own polit politician here. So donate if you can. If you can kick in any amount, donate. Um, this is completely publicly funded, and we have a lot of big money interest fighting against us. So donate if you can to help out. Or, um, you know, just share the truth. Be the media. Inform people. Talk to your friends and family. Do all that you can. You know, I ask that you get a bumper sticker. They're only a couple bucks. And you'd be amazed how many conversations that starts. That bumper sticker. I, I get asked daily, hey, is that your Bernie sticker? And it gives me chances to talk to people. You know, I've had chances to... Um, even correct some things like you know you you have people come up like I really like Bernie but I don't know about all the taxes I'm afraid of the taxes and you get chances to talk to people about this stuff and you know it, it, it starts conversations and that's the kind of things that we need to do little things little things like that all building up in into a wave that s sweeps over this whole system and changes it and we have that ability we can do that you know there are a lot 
of people, like I said, out there telling me that we can't. Um, some of them, you know, are, that's their job. The mainstream media, et cetera, that's their job. They, they, they've done that forever. That's the entire purpose of the media is to distract and divide and misinform. So they're going to do what they do. The ones that frustrate me, though, are the regular people, you know, but I've learned that I'm going to have to accept them and, and not get so obsessed with them. I used to stay in their feeds, these negative people on social media, because they have large followings. A lot of people like to gather in their feeds every day and pat each other on the back for giving up. You know, they feel like they're so woke. They figured out that the way to fight the system is to take your ball and go home and pout, right? Because that'll show them. That'll show them. Um, you know, otherwise, you're consenting to their system of oppression by voting. And, you know, you're, you're the naive one. You're the one that's misled. And I used to stay in these feeds because that's crazy talk. You know, that's crazy talk. They won't care. They would not care if, if all of us stopped voting. They wouldn't give a shit. And if need be, they would fake it, make it look like we voted. They don't care. They already have dead people voting. Do you understand? Our system is so rigged and corrupted. And they already gerrymander and close polling stations and do all kinds of things to, to, to discourage and make it harder to vote. You know, and that is with 60% of people not even being able to be bothered to vote. So only 40 to 50% of us even participate. And they do all they can to stop us from participating. And of that 40 to 50%, only probably 10, and that's probably high, are informed. And, you know, actually voting informed instead of just going in there and voting all blue or all red like an idiot. You know, voting like that is stupid. But if you're informing yourself and voting on the issues and voting for people, you know, over party and using your head and being involved and paying attention, then you're doing what needs to happen. That is what needs to happen in a democracy. That is how things got so out of control because because 60 percent of the people can't be bothered to vote, you know, whether they're jaded or, you know just don't care you know that's how we got here you don't think it matters it absolutely matters and our vote is our voice and our power is in our numbers and our unity and when we come together and use our vo vote our voice we can make things happen but if you want to sit around you know, that's why I thought this show was important. If you want to sit around and focus on how hard everything's going to be all the time and how much you're up against and and all of that, then you're going to get overwhelmed with it and, and you're going to talk yourself out of it. You're going to you're going to make it OK to quit. And that's what these people have done. And I'm probably still going to. Stay in the feed and be that voice that says hey come on guys no because these are woke people that's what's frustrating they are aware of what's wrong in in the world and and all of that they just think that they can fight it by not fighting it i don't understand it but there are a lot of people that feel that way and like i said there's different reasons that they join this cult but this 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 cult and that's what it is 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 dangerous because that is is not how change takes place and those of you that have large social media followings and preach that message you are doing harm and you know I, I like some of you I do but you make me angry and you you're what you're doing is harmful and there needed to be somebody out there countering that so that is why I created this show and Hopefully you guys are digging it and hopefully the message is getting out there that we can do this. We really can. We just have to do all that we can. You know, at the end of this fight, I am going to know that I did all I could. Win or lose.
you know, I, I think we're going to win and I'm not going to think like a loser. I'm not going to spend my, all my time and effort focusing on how hard it's going to be. I'm just going to do all I can. And if enough of us do that, we will win. We will. Not Bernie. Us. This is our fight and we can win. We can make things better. We can make a better future. We can change things. We can bring this greed-driven system and this corrupt government to its knees. We can change it. But we have to do the work. And all of you that are doing the work every day and are fighting and doing all you can in this political revolution are warriors. And I'm proud of every one of you. A lot of you watch this show, and I see you here every day. And thanks again, everyone, for coming. And if you shared, thank you so much. That helps us more than you know. And this message needs to spread and get out there. So, but real quick, I wanted to mention a few comments from yesterday's burn that we didn't get to get to during the show. So since the show is pre-recorded by necessity, we always go through some of the highlights from yesterday's comment section. And I share this show out everywhere. I probably share it to 30, 40 groups. And, um, of course, because it's my show and I want to build it. So, But I share it everywhere. Trump groups, Blue No Matter Who groups, Bernie groups, political groups, everywhere. And um, this was from a group share. And this person's name was Robert. And they are very pro-Trump. He was very pro-Trump. And he felt like Trump, that we already have a president that is anti-establishment. A lot of these people believe that Trump is anti-establishment because the media spends so much time propping him up as a boogeyman. And since they do that and the media spends so much time attacking him, they feel like, well, the media is against him. The media is the establishment. It's mouthpiece. So Trump must be good. And that's crazy because what the media is doing is they're building him up as a boogeyman to use him against the American people, um, use the fear of Donald Trump to get them to fall back in line. You know, I don't think Trump is anti-establishment. I really don't. I think I think Trump is pro-Trump. I think he's a narcissist and is just in love with himself. I think that he never intended to win the presidency and, you know, is just someone that didn't want the job that he has. And I think he's incompetent, but I don't think he's evil. You know what I'm saying? But I definitely don't think he's anti-establishment or any kind of a hero. But a lot of these people do. A lot of these Trump supporters do. And Trump has massive support. You know, he really does. People need to stop downplaying that. You can't beat him with one of these establishment shills. They'll lose. Biden, Harris, even Warren, any of them, they will lose. Bernie is the only winner up on that stage. And I would say Tulsi. I love Tulsi. I just don't think Tulsi has the name recognition to beat him. Trump has a huge following, and you want to beat him, you're going to need to put another populist up against him, and the only one with the momentum and needed to beat him is, is Bernie, and that's a fact. That's not me as a Bernie bro trying to make you go with Bernie. I'm telling you, you're going to lose, you go with anybody else. But Clinton was here and commented, Clinton is a Trump supporter also, and his comment had to do with guns. He is against Bernie. I think he would be pro-Bernie. He likes a lot of Bernie's ideas, but he is against Bernie's stance on guns. Uh, some of you know Bernie wants to ban assault weapons, which I'm fine with. But I can see a lot of people that are really big on the Second Amendment have big problem with giving any, even giving an inch on their rights, their gun rights. And I get that a little bit because I'm that way with the First Amendment. You know, I'm very protective of the First Amendment and very fearful of censorship, etc. And I wouldn't want to give an inch on that one. But I just don't think that regular people need these fancy military weapons. And I think that these weapons are made for one thing only, and that's to kill. And to kill as many people as quickly as possible as you can. That's why they're made. I mean, yes, you can kill with a handgun, but... You can kill a lot more efficiently with one of these fancy military weapons. Just like I can cut a pizza with a butter knife, 
but I'm going to cut it a lot better with a pizza slicer. You see what I'm saying? It's just that tool, those weapons, these assault weapons are made for killing. That's what they're made for. Um, that's it. And I don't believe that they should be in civilian hands. I just don't. But I do understand why people are fearful about backing down on something that they find to be or hold to be a, you know, a right that is guaranteed to us in the Constitution. And they don't want to give an inch. So I get it. But we're going to have to be realistic here, I think. And, and also, I don't think we need to let these issues like guns. Uh, what's another divisive issue they use against us all the time? Abortion. Um, religion. These things are used to divide us. No one's coming for your guns. Like, I, I really think that even if Bernie got elected, he's not going to ban assault weapons. I don't think he could get it done. There's a lot that Bernie could get done. But I, I, don't, I don't think that's one of them. I think the NRA and the military industrial complex has such a hold that coming for your guns is, is not a reality. It's not something that's going to happen. It's not something you need to fear. It's something that's being used to manipulate you. So that's how I would respond to your comment on the guns. I, I support Bernie's stance on banning assault weapons. I realize that you don't, but I think we can discuss these, these issues at a later time that it's more important to focus on the big picture. And Rob was here, and he commented that we will win. And we will. You know, that is the message of this show. That is what I want to get out to everybody every day. Because there's enough people telling you we can't do it. But we absolutely can. And we're going to. But that was it for the highlights of the comments yesterday. Let's get over to the newsroom and go into some news stories. The first story that I picked out to go over with you guys is from CNBC. And it's about how Bernie has released a plan to double union memberships as Democrats fight for labor support. It says uh, Bernie Sanders unveils a plan designed to more than double U.S. labor union membership. So that is a really good thing. You know, the Bernie campaign is the only campaign that has a unionized staff. That's in history, not just this year, in history. The first with fully unionized staff. And look at this. There's a hit piece in the middle of the article, how Bernie Sanders made his millions. Uh, he wrote a couple books. And what is wrong with that? Why, why are we shaming people from uh, being successful? You know, so he made some money off a few books. I don't fault the man. You know, I hear a lot about that sometimes. Bernie's got three houses. Did you know Bernie's a millionaire? You know, Bernie is a, a U.S. senator. He makes a good living. Jane makes a good living. And one of those houses, they got in an inheritance. So, no, I don't fault them for being successful. You know, and that's silly. But here it says, Sanders' plan would also create what his campaign called a sectoral bargaining system that sets standard across entire industries rather than at individual companies and ensure federal workers have a right to strike, stop businesses from making workers independent contractors or supervisors, you know, to put them on salary so they don't got to pay them hourly, and require companies to pass along any savings they get from transitioning to Sanders' signature Medicare for All proposal from current union negotiated plans to workers in the form of wages and benefits. That's really smart because companies are going to save a ton of money not having to provide insurance and they should pass that on to the workers. So and then keep union sponsored health providers available to members. Very nice. So that was uh, Sanders plan to more than double union membership in the coming years. And unions are important. You know, we, we need them. A lot of our rights and things we take for granted. We got because of unions, and they're dying off, so we need to support them. The next story that I was going to talk to you about has to do with Bernie Sanders' surrogate, Susan Sarandon, who is a very vocal supporter of Senator Sanders. And um, they've been attacking her relentlessly over on Twitter because of a comment she made. And this is supposed to be, I haven't watched it yet, supposed to be a video 
of that comment, but she takes a swipe at Elizabeth Warren and people are trashing her online saying, you know, basically blaming her for Hillary's loss and saying it's all her fault. But let's listen to Susan. One of the interesting things is he has this, one of his favorite surrogates, actress Susan Sarandon, on the trail uh, with him in Iowa. And this came up. He is not someone who used to be a Republican. He is not someone who used to take money or still takes money from Wall Street. He is the real deal. Uh, no names named. Um, but among the candidates in the race who happens to be competing with Senator Sanders for progressive voters is Elizabeth Warren, who at one point was a registered Republican. Yeah, she's been. She was. And that's all she said. You know what? I'm kind of amazed. When I picked that out, I thought it was going to be, I thought she was going to go after her a lot harder than that. So she didn't say anything that wasn't true. Elizabeth Warren is a wolf in sheep's clothing. I would have went at, at her twice as hard, you know, and as far as Susan Sarandon being the reason why Hillary lost, that's ridiculous. That is ridiculous. And vote shaming is ridiculous. You know, you want to shame somebody, shame the people that can't even be bothered to vote. Battery low. My speaker's going to die. The last story that I picked out to go over with you guys today is also from Twitter, uh, Trump's Twitter. And Bernie Sanders is jabs back at Trump over comments about Jewish loyalty. Trump is saying that American Jews, I wonder if they have the tweet, but he said that American Jews are disloyal to him. To which Bernie replied, let me say this to the president. I am a proud Jewish person and I have no concerns about voting Democratic. And in fact, I intend to vote for a Jewish man to become the next president of the United States. So that was a little back and forth between Bernie and, and Trump on Twitter. Not really a back and forth, though, because Trump doesn't go at Bernie. I don't know if you noticed that. Um, I saw a statistic that uh, Obama only tweeted like 600 times the whole time he was president. And Trump is way in the thousands. But he never goes at Bernie. He'll have a Twitter fight with Arnold Schwarzenegger, with Rosie O'Donnell. But Bernie goes at him all day long, and he don't ever go back at Bernie. Trump doesn't want any part of Bernie. All right, well, that was it for the news today. Uh, let's get into Bernie events. The campaign was just in South Carolina, and tomorrow they will be in Northern California for two events. They're going to have a rally and a town hall. And both of these events are going to be really big events. So check that out, and that's what you can look forward to in the coming week with the Bernie Sanders campaign. If you want to stay connected in what's going on in the revolution and the campaign, text Bernie to 67760 and that will enroll you in the texting program. And volunteers like me that do the texting will text you out events and information relevant to the revolution and the campaign. Or get the Burn app. You can get that anywhere you get your phone apps. That's a really good way to stay informed in the, in the campaign and what's going on with the campaign too. Plus, you can do little neat things like record a My Bernie story, so that's cool. Or you can just watch the show every day, and I'll let you know what's going on with the campaign. So that's what's going on with the campaign and the news, you know, and we've reached the end of another episode of The Daily Burn. Every time I finish one of these, I'm kind of amazed. I'm, you know, like I said, I'm an amateur. You know, I, I decided to do this show. I did live feeds on Facebook before, you know, so I was pretty comfortable with at least speaking online i just never put a show together before i i had a show uh my conspiracy theory show but it wasn't like structured like this this i've i've taken real real seriously and mostly because i've had some trolls that were very mean but there was one particular troll who basically said that i was harming the movement that that my show was going to get trump elected president again and he didn't bother me bother me but it did make me realize that that this that, that not that i believe that this show is hurting the movement or that bernie would even be against it no one asked me to do this but i believe this is what we're supposed to do this is my version of doing all that i can you know this is what i felt like i could do so I do this, um, but I don't think that's hurting anything. And, and I definitely don't think Bernie would be against me doing it. But so I don't believe any of that. But I do believe that that it needs to be good. No one's going to want to watch it if it's just me talking. 
You know, it's got to have an entertainment value to it and some structure. So I've put a lot of effort into this show and hopefully that shows and hopefully it pays off because I want this to get out there. And if no one watches it, I'm just talking to myself. So I'm trying to make a really good show for you guys. And over time, I think I'm getting a little better as we go. You know, if you looked at earlier, the we've only been doing this. Or I always talk like I got a mouse in my pocket. I've only been doing this for three months. And um, I think even just in three months, you can see a dramatic difference. So we've improved a lot. There's more to do. You know, I need to improve the lighting. And I want to go back to doing it live. So speaking of, I don't like bringing this up. But it it's not really fair to those that have participated in the fundraiser for me not to promote it. You know, I don't ever feel right asking for stuff. I never have. But I am trying to build something here, and I think it has value. And if you want to be a part of helping us to build that, and you would like to see us return to lives, I have a fundraiser going, and it has nothing to do with this show. I don't usually even mention it on this show, but most of the people that have con contributed to the fundraiser are viewers of this show so it's not fair to them if they believe in something and they supported it and thank you by the way that means so much to me i i set that fundraiser up because people asked me to you know i didn't feel right about it i still don't honestly it's hard for me to promote it and the reason for that is there are people raising money online for things that are very important that they need like medical expenses I don't need a new computer it just would give me the pot the opportunity and the ability to go back to doing these live and to do other things as well and I want to make this like a network I, I, I envision this show being part of of a group of shows on my YouTube channel. Uh, some of you saw that I announced within a year, I want to be self-employed. I feel like this is my gift, speaking, talking. I'm going to find some way to get paid to do that. And, you know, it wouldn't be this show. You know, I don't promote my Patreon. I don't self-promote on here. It was a long time before I even said my name on this show I look at this show as volunteering but you know I want to bring in other shows and you know and build it into something bigger And if you want to be part of helping to do that I have a fundraiser raising money to get a new computer for the shows <laughs> I don't know why it's so hard for me to promote that but people have been supporting it and it's not fair to them to to not try to see it through. And when you start something, you should finish it. And, you know, I need to get over this anyway. If I want to make a living doing this, if I want to turn this into a job, you know, uh, speaking, doing shows, I'm going to need to get used to the idea of crowdfunding. Because that is just the way things happen now, you know. And I don't want to be beholden to advertisers and have people tell me what I can and cannot talk about. So I'm going to need to embrace crowdfunding and raising money in that way. Sorry, I keep sniffling. But I'm going to have to get more used to that anyway. But there we go. I mentioned it. I, I, I didn't feel right not mentioning it, and I didn't feel right mentioning it. Because this show's not about me. This show is about the movement and the revolution and, and Bernie and all of that and about motivating us as we move forward. And I don't remember where I was going before I made my little pitch because I don't know why, but it's so shameful for me to do that. I need to get over that. That's, that's silly. But um, thanks again for coming to the Daily Burn. And your support is amazing. The, the support for this show... It really inspires me. Um, we've grown a lot. We're getting a lot of shares and a lot more views. Uh, our average views used to be in the hundreds. Now they're you know, 300 average views each day. That's great. Thank you guys so much 
for all your help and all of your support and all that you do out there every day in this political revolution. Those of you that are out there fighting are warriors. You're my heroes. And what we're doing is what is going to be remembered historically as the moment that our country changed direction and that we got, we grabbed hold of the reins and we fixed this shit. They're not going to talk about it now. The revolution will not be televised. They're going to do all they can to even convince the average person that this isn't even happening. But history will look back on this as the moment that real change began to take place. Sorry, I'm, the sniffling's got to sound so awful. But I'll, I'll, I'll get over it. I'll get over this cold and we will just keep moving forward. Just keep moving forward. Keep doing all you can. And we're going to win. That's a fact. I'll see you guys tomorrow for another episode of The Daily Burn. Thank you guys so much. See you tomorrow.